What's brewing coffee lovers? Welcome to The Caffeine Show. In this video, we're gonna be looking at a cafe in Australia that's using facial recognition software so you no longer have to interact with your barista. We're also celebrating Plant Power Day with Alpro and talking about one of the newest coffee growing regions, California, and tasting this trilogy of coffees from one of the oldest regions, the Yemen. The story of which is told in this book, The Monk of Mocha. First up, we're going to talk about a Bahista Cafe in Sydney, Australia. Cafe owner and tech entrepreneur Jeff Cropley has built, installed facial recognition software in his cafe that scans his customers as they walk in. This information is then transmitted to an iPad behind the bar with their name, reward points and their regular order. Cropley states that he wanted the technology because he was pretty useless at remembering his customers' names and orders and wanted to have better interactions with them. The cafe has signs stating they're running this program and their biometric data may be recorded for better customer service. He's also made it clear that customers can choose whether they want their identities to be on the database. But so far, nobody has declined. If they don't want to participate, customers can inform the barista that their details will not be recorded. Despite the Big Brother connotations, the figures show that the technology has been a positive impact on his profits. Since launching back in the summer of 2016, Cropley claims the new system has boosted his business by 37%, and that's roughly 1.2 million Australian dollars. With over 2,000 people now on the database, the technology has already been licensed to other cafes in Australia and attracted around $1 million in seed funding with Toby Smith of Toby's Estate as one of the first investors. So if you really can't be f with that chirpy morning interaction with your barista, this could be your ideal scenario. How do you feel about this? Would you mind having your face scanned for faster customer service? Let us know in the comments down below. Later on in this video, we're gonna talk about coffees from one of the oldest origins to cultivate coffee, and that's the Yemen. But where are the new origins? How about the US state of California? Over the past decade, California farmers have been seeing symptoms of climate change in their fields and orchards. Less winter chill, crops blooming earlier, and more heat waves. In a new study, the University of California's researchers said that effects range from lower crop yields to warming that will render parts of the state unsuitable for crops that are grown there today. So this leads us to the question, what will grow there? Maybe coffee's the answer. Jay Rusky, the owner of Goodland Organics, has been passionately advocating for the viability of Californian grown coffee based on years of development at his farm in the foothills of Santa Ynez Mountains near Santa Barbara. Now, 15 years on, under his avocado trees and alongside his passion fruit and caviar limes are 1,500 coffee trees finally bearing high-grade cherries and winning top scores on the cupping tables. Rusky is growing a number of different varietals, including geisha, pacamara, and bourbon. The US state is now boasting 30 farms growing more than 30,000 coffee trees, according to the University of California's Division of Agriculture and Natural Resources, and with at least two dozen more farms expected to begin growing coffee in 2018. Watching all this from afar has been Blue Bottle's coffee buyer, Charlie Habiger, who purchased the entire 140 kilo crop from Rusky last year. These beans went on to be sold for $18 for a single cup and 100 gram tins of Geisha and Keturah blend for $65, which sold out within two weeks. Have you tasted Californian coffee yet? Would love to know what you thought. Leave some comments in the box below. This episode of The Caffeine Show is brought to you by Alpro. It's Plant Power Day on Wednesday the 7th of March, when people across the UK will be celebrating all things plant-based. Good for you, good for the planet. The future of food is plant-based. So whether you're a meat eater, 100% plant eater, pescatarian, flexitarian, bring veggies, fruits, whole grains, pulses, legumes, nuts, and seeds from the side of your plate to the front and center. Alpro coined the phrase plant-based eating over 35 years ago because they believe adding more plants to people's plates every day can help change the way the world eats for the better. The way we're currently producing and eating food and, eat it and using the world's resources means that we'll need two planets by 2030. 
If you put plants first for just one day, you can save 1,500 litres of water, which is the equivalent to two weeks worth of showers. It also reduces your carbon footprint by two kilos, the equivalent of seven and a half miles of driving in a car, or the energy required to make 1,064 cups of tea. So get involved on the Plant Power Day, choose a plant-based coffee as your morning pick-me-up, or make an almond latte, coconut cappuccino, the special drink of the day for your customers. It doesn't have to be complicated, and for the recipe inspiration, visit alpro.com for professionals. We've been joined by Phil Wayne, the editor of Caffeine Magazine, and we're going to uh, look at these coffees from Yemen. We did do a small piece about this in the latest issue of Caffeine Magazine, but we've now received the actual coffees themselves. So I'm going to pass over to Phil to give you a little bit of a backstory. Okay, so uh, I've read a lot of books about coffee in my time, and um, so faced with another book about coffee, I have to say that I found this one probably the most enjoyable book cool. related to coffee I've ever read. Um, partly because it isn't necessarily about coffee, it's the story, it's the incredible story of this man, Mokhtar al Kanshali. no idea if I pronounced that correctly, who uh, grew up in the tough streets of San Francisco as a Yemeni immigrant and eventually discovered coffee and discovers that Yemen was once this proud country producing the best coffee in the world okay. and wants to go back to Yemen and revitalize the coffee industry there and take it to a whole other level. So you can read the book. I really advise you to buy this book. It's really enjoyable. It's so gripping. I don't think I barely put it down. I read the whole thing in maybe a couple of days and it's uh, quite a thick book. And um, I was really intrigued having read the book in tasting the coffee, uh, which is one of the characters in the book, if you like, which Mokhtar brought from Yemen, brought over to uh, Northern California to roast, uh, where he runs his Point of Mocha um, coffee roastery in Oakland. Fantastic. Okay, so what do we have in, in the box? Because it's a pretty impressive thing so far. Well, it, um, Mokhtar got a lot of publicity, first of all, because while he was in Yemen trying to improve coffee quality over there, he, uh, you know, he had to go around farms with an AK-47, he was taken uh, prisoner a few times, there was a civil war going on. So this coffee's been brought out um, under threat to people's lives and people's wow. uh, livelihoods. Um, so there was a lot of drama around it, particularly in America, it made news stories and everything. The other thing that made news stories was that say for instance this coffee here was sold at 160 dollars for this box set of, of free coffees um, and it's selling very well i have to say and also blue bottle was serving uh, one of Mokhtar's coffees for 16 dollars a cup wow. or 16 dollars a serving um, so that got a lot of publicity and uh, one of the reasons for the price is the rarity value and the story involved and you know we all love coffee with a good story absolutely um, the other factor is the quality and uh, you know on the cupping tables around Oakland and San Francisco uh, th this coffee got a reputation for being quite special in terms of its tastes uh in terms of the taste obviously we've got different coffees here so in terms of the varying tastes and the w way those coffees cupped on the table okay. and uh, the high quality involved we've got coffee grown at real quite extreme altitudes here of you know three thousand feet plus um very difficult terrain that you can't drive up uh and uh you've got coffee that's been shipped out of a country you know during a civil war with all of that entails so a lot of reason to make this coffee quite special sounds amazing well i think i'm i'm pretty desperate to get stuck in yeah yeah so one thing that impressed me when i received this coffee thanks to Mokhtar for sending it to us um was the packaging as you can see you've got this lovely snug fit box here which opens up and then each individual coffee is packaged in these lovely boxes. Wonderful. Before we started shooting this video we did actually taste two of these coffees. We've still got one to taste so what we're going to do is we're going to cut it there, we're going to brew up the last coffee and we're going to taste that on, on camera but also compare that to the other coffees that we've already tasted. Okay, so we have brewed up the last of the three coffees. Uh, this one is the Ali. We're gonna give it a taste. I'm getting ginseng or something like that. It's definitely sort of a floral, mm. herbal sort of yeah quality to it. I think what I'm really blown away by here is how different all these coffees are. Um, 
They're all naturally processed. They're all from the same region. Not only unusual from different to each other, but also mm. different to other coffees I've tasted. Yeah, I would, I would say they are all quite unique. The first one we had here was the Fatima. And I think this was the first one we brewed up and we were both completely blown away by it. It almost tasted though it was updosed. In fact, we had to check our ratio calculations, <laughs> didn't we? That, we did. Uh, we hadn't actually accidentally uh, updosed this one because yeah. it was just so potent. It really uh, was, yeah. Um, but it was super, super strong, but without the kind of astringency or bitterness or any unpleasant taste that you might get yeah. with uh, you know, over-extracted or updosed, particularly updosed coffee. You just got this really intense, intense flavors. Yeah. Um, and, and the interesting thing about this, the, the, the flavors here were, it was that cacao chocolate flavor, but not chocolate in a sweet sugary chocolate. Mm. Kind of reminded me of uh, um, the craft chocolate makers, you know, when you go visit them and, and you taste this, you know, very dark craft chocolate that coats the mouth with that slight cacao kind of acidity and that fruitiness too, that kind mm. of like, tropical fruit, um, mango kind of fruit that was there, mm. but but like hiding almost behind the cacao. Yeah. And you did remark on the s smell as well while this one was uh, brewing, didn't you? Uh, That's right, when it was brewing, it was sort of dancing all over the place. I initially thought, oh, this is like strawberry or something like that. And then it was like, no, no, is this mango? The the tropicalness, the, the tropical notes from these were quite intense, and yeah. it was something that you was like, "Oh, I'm excited about this coffee. This is going to be, this is going to be really crazy." But then, not to taste that yeah. fruit in the cup, but to get this cacao was 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 quite, was quite at shocking. Odds. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, in a, it's shocking in a very pleasant way, mm. but shocking nonetheless. Yeah. But moving on to the Shiba, which is the second coffee that we uh, brewed up again, very different, a completely different, yeah. This one's so creamy, just just such a creamy coffee, mm. you know, kind of like it reminded me of that kind of m fruity kind of milk kind of flavour. And, yep. uh, you know, I, I, I mentioned like cream soda, didn't I, at some yes. point? And, and there was this sort of, um, there was this acidity to it that we kept we kept going back to tangerines, which was on the tasting tangerine, notes, but yeah. it was there. It and was really evident, the tangerine, wasn't it? Yeah. But it was really. a fizziness, and I think that's kind of where the cream soda came from as it well. It zings the, the around zing. your mouth, it zings yeah. around there. So yeah. it was, again, that was really interesting and again, very different to the previous coffee. Sure. Um, and again, although a naturally processed coffee didn't taste didn't taste overly natural. You couldn't really taste the funkiness or the process. Or, mm. And you did mention something about how you, you felt about the roasting of this one? Yeah, I mean, I don't think the roast was necessarily off, but I, I felt that it was slightly underdeveloped. And um, you mentioned that maybe that was to kind of accentuate this sort of the tangerine flavour to yeah, give the yeah. give the zinginess. But they, it kind of did err on the sour. Speaking yeah. tiny, tiny flies here in what, you know, yeah. it's, it's superb coffee. Yeah. And we can see why even at, I think it's $158 retail, this set, um, you can see why, you know, they've been flying off the shelves practically. You yeah, know, even at that price, because there's so many coffees on the market at the moment. Everybody wants a coffee with a story. The story mm. of this coffee is so great, and it's just beautiful the way it's been presented like this as well. Yeah. You know, and top marks to uh, Port of Mocha in uh, Oakland. You know, for the way that they've produced this and presented this. And thank you so much, guys, for um, sending this Thanks to for us. Sending us. If uh, if you want to try and taste these coffees, then either. Uh, hijack a Phil on the street who might have some on him, or you can go to the uh, Port of Mocha website where you might be able to still get yourself some. Or if you happen to be near Blue Bottle, I believe they're selling it for around $16 a cup. So good luck with that. You wouldn't be disappointed, would you? Even at $16 a cup. Yeah. I mean, that made the news $16 a cup in yeah. the States, but you wouldn't be disappointed. You I don't know? think you no. would. No. Also look out, um, because Mokhtar, who's the guy who went to Yemen and to produce his wonderful coffees, uh, he's in Amsterdam, I think, very soon soon um, uh, to talk doing some talks and it'll be over in London in April so look out for some events then we don't have dates at the moment but we imagine there'll be some uh, yeah. events in bookshops in London um, the, and you must go along you must go and meet Mokhtar and hear his story thanks very much for coming in Phil uh, thanks, Phil Scott. obviously is the editor of Caffeine Magazine and his new issue will be out at the London Coffee Festival look and we look forward for it. to it it's going to be a special one thank you so that's where we're going to end it. We hope you like this video and like what we're trying to do here. If you do, please hit that like button. If you want to be kept up to date with uh, these videos, then hit the subscribe button. Or if you haven't seen our last video, tap just down there and there's another video screen you'll be able to click on. Thanks also to Alpro for sponsoring this episode and thanks very much for watching.